get started, you have to have an AWS account. Amplify is available in the free tier, so it won't cost you anything to play around with. You also need to have a profile configured locally. I'm not going to go over that because Amazon has it already well documented. I'll place the link for this and other things I refer to in the description below. You should also have an account with GitHub or something similar, as Amplify is integrated with it, and a deployment build can be kicked off when you push updates to the repo. For my project, I'm using Vite to create a React app. In this video, I'm just going to demonstrate the basics of setting up the Amplify Gen 2 app. In future videos, I'll be building a web store type app that's connected to Stripe for ordering and payment processing. Once you create your React app using V, you can CD into the directory. Then type npm create amplify at latest to set up your app as an Amplify project. There are some dependencies to install. And you might as well install Amplify's UI React library now, too, as we'll be using that in a bit. And now you can type npm run dev to run the app locally. By default, your Amplify project will start off with an Amplify directory. Within it will be auth and data directories with resource TypeScript files inside. The storage directory you see here is one that I added. There's also a backend TypeScript file. Let's take a look at these. To define the auth resources for my app, I created a file in amplify auth resource.ts and um, specified that um, the users will log in with their email and I wanted to create a group called admins. Here's my schema for um, my product model, which is defined in the data resource.ts file. And you can see that um, I have just a, a few fields here, ID, name, description, price, and an image. And I'm allowing the uh, unauthenticated users, so guest users, uh, to read, authenticated signed in users to read, and admins to do everything. And I define the default authorization mode as IAM. So the default authorization mode is uh, unauthenticated. You could also leave off the to operation and specific permissions for the admins group user to get all permissions. So here we have the, the, the resource.ts file for storage. And the, um, it, uh, it sets up a, a storage bucket for, for in S3 for this, um, for this project. And it's gonna store product images. It allows anonymous users to, to read, signed in users to read, and admins to do everything. Here's the, the backend.ts file. So we just uh, define the backend and, and import the resources we created, and that's all you need to do. Let's take a look at the, the React app. So here's, uh, here's our main.ts file. And what's interesting about this? Well, I'm importing the authenticator. I'm importing the theme provider, but not yet leveraging it yet. I'm not really taking advantage of any of its features, but um, so we import the authenticator and I'm wrapping the app in an authenticator provider. And we'll see in a minute how that is used. Here we're in the app file itself. So I'm creating some admin routes uh, for product create and product update, which I will show in a moment. Create a browser router um, for layout, landing, sign in, admin routes. I think that's straightforward. Let's go into the some pages and layout I am just uh, providing a displaying a nav bar and an outlet for the for the other pages the landing page uh, just shows the um, list of products at this point I have a, a sign in page when this page is loaded it it uses the authenticator that that AWS Amplify provides. Let's take a look at the authenticator 
component running locally. If I click on sign in, get here, you can put in a user I created previously. You can also create an account. This is a forget your password function. So this is all provided by AWS Amplify. And because that account is an admin in the admins group, we see the edit and delete. And here we have a use authenticator hook. And this is, av is available because of the authenticator provider. And we get our auth status, which can have a value of authenticated, unauthenticated, or configuring. So once we authenticate, we navigate back to the home page here. So here's the nav bar. Here I have a, a sign out button that calls the sign out function that is um, returned from the use authenticator. So it, that's again, something that it, AWS Amplify provides. Handle sign in navigates to that sign in page I just showed. Now here's the, the list of products page. And here I'm importing the schema, as you can see from the data resource that I showed at the beginning. And we can give that to um, use that for for um, for typing. Uh, I'm creating a so we can we can create a product type depending on whether the user is signed in or not. I need to use a a different auth mode, either user pool or IAM. If the if the user is signed in, we use user pool. If they're not, we use IAM. We specify this, this context.auth status so that we don't get um, auth status updated more frequently than is useful to us. Here I have a function to find out whether the user is an admin so that I can decide whether to display the edit and delete button. Later I'll move the check is admin function into a custom hook. To display the list of products, I'm subscribing to um, to the product observe query, and I have these two different methods depending on whether the user is authenticated or not. Instead of using this subscription, you could also call the list operation. Now, this product component takes the product and whether or not the user is an admin. By the way, the authorization rules we set up on the data schema will restrict what users can do, regardless of what buttons we present in the UI. Here's the list product component. And it allows the, the user, if he or she is an admin, to delete the product. Here we're um, calling the delete function for a product. Once it's deleted, we return null. And here we're using the storage image component provided by uh, AWS. And for that, we just need to give it the, the image key and an alt value to, help, to update. We navigate to the update page. To delete, we just call the delete function. In actual production, you probably want a soft delete instead of hard delete this way. So here's the product create page. Note that we're taking the product create form, um, which was generated auto automatically by Amplify, but I've customized it in a couple of ways that I'll show in a second. I don't really need to supply a, an on, a handle submit function. I'm just doing it to take a look at the values and play around. The on success I, I used to, to take away the form and 
um, so that product was created successfully. Let's take a look at the product update as well. It's the same, except that we get an ID from the from the path, uh, from the params, and we pass that um, down to this product update form. And again, this is generated from by um, Amplify, except that I've customized it a little bit. When you generate forms using the Amplify command, they'll be created the components will be created in your current working directory. So here I generated them outside the source directory. If you don't plan on modifying them, you could just generate them within your source directory, whatever you want to do. I'm just experimenting with it. Um, what I did is copy everything into a UI components directory within my source. And then you can see that it's generated forms for um, models that I created previously and th that I'll use eventually, but right now I'm not going to be talking about. So here in the product create form, I've added a couple of things. Um, these two these two imports related to um, being able to upload images. And if I look down here, description, price, I get to the store manager component, which I've put in place of a text field that would ordinarily allow a user to put in a string for the image field. So the way the storage manager function or um, component works is you can provide a path and how many files can be uploaded, acceptable file types, etc. And similarly, on the product update form, here I've, I've just cop commented out the, um, the generated code for, for uh, an image text field and replaced it with um, with this so that if there's an image, we use the storage image component to display it, passing in the image as the path. Uh, I've added a, a button to get rid of the image. And here we see the storage manager again, just like it is in the create product form. Also, I wanted to point out something else I modified in the in automatically generated forms. I specified the the auth mode. It's only going to be a signed in user, and only a admin who will who will um, create a create or update a project. Yeah. So there we go. So here we have the, the create product form, put in a product name. You can see that the uh, this is a storage manager component. Provides a little thumbnail there. We can submit it. And we should see the um, product we created right here. If we click on edit, we see the storage image component has loaded our image. We can remove the image, and save it. No, frog warmer doesn't have an image. We can delete the component or delete the product and it goes away. Amplify Gen 2 introduces a sandbox concept. This allows you to deploy the app with the backend resources independently of other developers on your team working on the same app. 
and without affecting the production branch. Updates happen automatically when you push to the connected repo. We can see when we go into the AWS console for Amplify and go to our specific app, we can, we can take a look at the resources that have been set up. We can get the settings, etc. Here we can see that uh, backend resources like users have been set up. There's an admins group. There's an admin user. We can look at some data. So we can play around with the, the backend here. And here we can see the product image. This is my app deployed and hosted. You can see the URL there. And we're not signed in right now. If I click sign in and sign in as, uh, as the admin, this is my admin account. See, it's the same interface as the local sandbox. We can edit. Oh, but I didn't deploy. So, I mean, I haven't deployed it the latest changes. So, here's a, a opportunity for me to show you how, how we do that. As you can see, some of the changes that I need to update include the storage manager and storage image component being added to the um, product update form. So just adding those things. So let's commit this change to product update form. If we go to the console and take a look at our project in the Amplify thingy, we can see that we're in the process of deploying. Took three minutes to to build. Uh, let's take a look. Um, I'm gonna just go here. So now, let's open up a new tab. And now, if we go in and edit, we see that our component is there. That's all for now. In future videos, I'll be building a web store app using React and Amplify Gen two. We'll connect it to Stripe for ordering and payment processing. We'll set up some Lambda functions and use other Amazon services via Amplify Gen 2. Take a look in the description below for some relevant links.